So Otto is back and will be with us um, through Christmas. Um, then we'll be away for a couple of weeks. And the gentleman we had last week, Pastor George Grubb, will be here for two weeks. And then who knows what will happen. So um, you received in your email or in your mail this week some very exciting news. On Sunday, December 19th at 9 a.m., our pastoral candidate will be among us, will preach and lead that service. Following that service, we will have a congregational meeting where the members of the parish will uh, elect the next pastor of Trinity. So that's very, very exciting. Much more information is forthcoming. It will probably come early this coming week. Um, we've had to scramble to do a lot of things, in, in, including change the date of our gingerbread decorating, which was set for the 19th and now is in fact going to be next Sunday. So we want to thank everyone from Chris, Ed, and from Youth and Courtney um, for helping to make sure that this all happens. We've become a very flexible parish during the pandemic, I have noticed. And, you know, like sometimes I feel like kicking and screaming myself, but there's been very little of that, actually. So I, I, I am very grateful to all of you for that. So um, keep an eye on your email, or if you don't receive email, keep an eye on your U.S. Postal Service mail. Um, more information about the pastoral candidate will be coming. Some of you have had some questions. I've not answered all the questions yet because the information is coming very, very soon. You also received um, in this week's email and um, the snail mail version of the, um, the newsletter information about Christmas Eve. We will have three services on Christmas Eve this year, um, and this year only, but um, they will be at four, seven, and a half an hour earlier at nine. So that's 4 p.m., 7 p.m. Those services, 4 and 7, are typically more family-friendly. And then the later service will have festival choir and handbells. Um, the very early service at 4 will have Amy providing special music. Sam Lozier is going to do special music at 7. Um, and then the rest of us at 9. I'll be here for all three of those. Um, on Sundays, December 26th and Sunday, January 2nd, we will have one service at 9 a.m. and no Sunday school. So just please be aware of that. Please look at your newsletter. There's lots of information. There's a neat profile of um, Nancy Sheriff as our member of the month. I wrote a reflection on this morning's psalmody, the, the Song of Zechariah, um, and there's lots of information to share about how we're going to be proceeding with things in the, in the coming weeks. Um, we want to thank everyone from Chris Ed who... Um, did the wish list wonderland this morning. I popped over a couple times and it looked like the kids were having a really great time. So that, that was wonderful. That was sort of our replacement for breakfast with Santa. And then as I said, next week parading. And that's a lot of announcements. So I'm going to turn the service over to Pastor Otto now. Thank you. Let us stand for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. God of mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of God. God, for whom we wait in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. 
Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked upon you with favor. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We praise you, O God, for this circle of light that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your spirit, that we may, light, be, that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain, and whose day draw, draws near. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give all people knowledge of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to this temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. The word of the Lord. Let us read together responsively the song of Zechariah. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember the, your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in the darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. <clears throat> I, th <clears throat> excuse me. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you 
because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense of the conf and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of, Jesus, of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't usually publish my sermon titles. David has never given me a deadline for bulletin submissions, but if there is one, I suspect that it would come early in the week. Now, of course, I begin working on my sermon early in the week, but God keeps whispering in my ear right up until the moment that I step into the pulpit. And so often the place where I think I'm going to begin turns out to be very different. If I were to give today's homily a title, however, it would be Politics and Power. Now I know what you're thinking. Aren't preachers supposed to keep politics out of the pulpit? Yes, I hear that advice, and for the most part, it's sound. Most often, I heed it. No party or platform or program or policy can be regarded as the epitome of Christian truth. And in spite of what some religious leaders might suggest, there is no political party that can claim to represent Jesus Christ. So by all means, Let's keep politics out of the pulpit. But it all depends on what we mean by politics. If we are talking about partisan politics, then they are clearly out of bounds. God is neither a Republican nor a Democrat. But if we step back and widen the lens and expand our definitions, then it's impossible not for us to consider politics when we proclaim the gospel. Advent is profoundly a political time. Concerned as it is with the world, how it is, and how the world will be, when God's kingdom comes and God's will truly is done on earth just as it is done in heaven. Jesus came, as he said, quoting Isaiah, to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now that's nothing if not political. In our gospel lesson this morning, we meet another seemingly unpolitical character with a profoundly political agenda. Did you catch the way our gospel lesson began? 
in the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. Luke names seven national, regional, and religious rulers. If you want to know power, if you're looking at raw politics, then look no further than these names. And yet, plunked down next to these power brokers is John, a wanderer in the wilderness. God chose John as his messenger, dismantling any idea that conventional political or social power is necessary for us to carry out God's profoundly political mission. Now, John may not hold political power, but his message is authoritative nonetheless. John commands us to prepare the way of the Lord, to begin major reconstruction on the systems and structures of our world. Valleys will be filled, mountains will be leveled, and crooked ways will be made straight. This is no small project that John has in mind. But before we go starting up the bulldozers, notice how this upending of the established order is going to take place. John doesn't arrive with heavy equipment, nor with the power of armies or wealth. Instead, God empowers the wilderness wanderer with nothing but the word, repent. John arrives with a call to stop looking to the power brokers for our peace, but instead to return to God, who can level mountains with a few ordinary folks willing to claim a different kind of power. This call to return to God is a radical notion, inviting us to enter God's vision for a world ruled not by power over others or by false peace, but by love. It's a call not to overthrow, but to clear the path in our hearts and in our world to receive God, who provides our ultimate peace. Returning to God, we see possibility where before we saw hopelessness. Returning to God, we enter a place of desolation, John's wilderness. And we see that God transforms it into a place of redemption and new life and abundance. As we prepare to welcome the Christ child, let us answer God, John's call to repent, embracing God's ultimate peace as we fervently pray, come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. May it be so.
with the whole church, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Christ, Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. You send messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. May our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay preachers be confident in their preaching, that their words and our lives witness to your grace. We pray especially for our pastoral candidate as they prepare to be with us soon. Hear us, O oh God. Send your spirit to all living creatures that are endangered. Provide them with shelter and care and bring us into right relationship with the earth that you create and call good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Send leaders to our nation's cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones, immigrants, the oppressed, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill, especially Mary Ann, Ed, Bernice, Barbara, Dorothy, Bob, Jerry, Ginny, Joanne. Grant them healing and wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. We offer our own intercessions, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. We remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered, confident that your work will be completed we live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O oh God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of 
power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever, amen. Come to Christ's banquet, feast on God's gift of grace. As you take the bread, remember that this is the body of Christ given for you. As you take the cup, Remember that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, in this meal we give, you give us a foretest of taste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing Almighty the of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.